for those tough wake-ups. Stats are misleading. It's Marsh and Mello. Major foul. Wake up to serious sports talk. He fist his head. It's Marsh. The CFL, baby. And Mello. I love Canada. It's Marsh and Mello. This is football. For those tough wake-ups. They're heating up. It's Marsh and Mello. Coming your way, Hamilton. Wake up to serious sports talk. Gas tank gonna be full. It's Marsh. In Canada. And Mello. Why not, eh? It's Marsh and Mello. Thank you, Canada. Everybody's doing it. Uh, it's Masters Week. It's Masters Week. Kyle, are you, excited? are you excited for Masters Week the way we used to when we were on radio? You still get pumped up? Little uh, little par three? Little tiger intrigue? Little, uh, what are you feeling? I did enjoy the studio uh, in Hamilton because I could put all three TVs on the Masters. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, one would be at like Amen Corner. <laughs> and then the other one would like follow like certain featured groups. And then the other one was like Canadian specific groups. But uh, mm-hmm. it was fun. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Masters. You know, golf is at a point now where there's so many guys that can win every week. And maybe it was always like that. But with Tiger in his dominance, maybe you forget about it. But now there's like... I can pick 50 guys and I can't differentiate on who is better equipped to win the Masters. Yeah, and here's what I find to be really interesting about the practice crowds that followed Tiger throughout the week and uh, just how people have been going crazy around the idea of him coming back off the broken leg and the car crash and all of these things is that yeah. golf, it seems like, did move on. Like, I, I feel as though golf was like, okay, we finally reached the point. Because you know that this is very similar to the Tom Brady thing, where you feel like, okay, they're going to move on. They're going to move on. Oh, it, it doesn't happen for five years and then six years and then seven years and then eight years. And then to me, Tiger's car crash and him saying, oh, yeah, my right leg doesn't even look like my left leg anymore. Because he's on record saying that. Like, it's, yeah. it, it literally is almost indistinguishable uh, from <laughs> what it used to be on his right leg after his car crash and the broken leg. It felt like he was very much ready to move on and that the golf world was ready to move on. And then it's like Brady unretiring where it's like, oh, no, I'm, I was just screwing with you guys. I'm actually back. And I, if I'm in good enough shape to be in contention, I'm going to make noise at this tournament. So, I mean, realistically, he's more likely to miss the cut than he is to win the damn thing. But, yeah. the, fa- but the fact that he's willing to play to me, says that he thinks that he can compete because Tiger Woods is not going to enter a golf tournament that he doesn't think he can win. Like, he's not one of these sentimental guys where he's just going to show up and play two rounds and and then disappear. Yeah, I think this can go one of two ways. One is he's just bad, and maybe he withdraws from the tournament after the first round because he's like, yeah, I just I don't feel it. I don't think he Uh, plays if he's going to do that, though. Like, I think he knows his body well enough that he would not show up, play these practice rounds, enter himself, put that pressure on himself with all those crowds following him on Thursday, Friday, if he's not going to physically be able to walk the course. But if he goes out there and he shoots a 79 today on Thursday, if he goes out and shoots a 79, yeah, what's the what's the want to 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 try to come back again. He's not going to make the cut at that point, right? Sentimental Friday? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he comes back out for Friday and he tries it. And if he continues to you know, play poorly, maybe he walks off or yeah. maybe he just misses the cut, right? I think this has one of two ways of going. One is he plays very poorly and he misses the cut by a lot. Or yeah. two, he makes the cut. I'm not saying he's going to be in contention, but, you know, he could finish the tournament, like T25, something like that. Mm, yeah, it could happen. Could happen. We'll see how it plays out over the next couple of days here. Uh, as Kyle said, it is a Thursday morning. It's nice and early, which is why uh, we both look disheveled as hell if you're watching on YouTube. Apologies for yeah. not, not getting you a show last week throughout the Combine. It's been a couple of weeks since we've done this, and the reason for that is that Kyle moved, and I was busy doing Combine <laughs> stuff. So congratulations to Kyle for uh, getting a new spot and being able to, uh, to settle. And you were joking just before we came on that you're like, everything around me looks like garbage yeah because, there's because... like boxes everywhere <laughs> and moving is terrible well i i talked to uh, uh somebody from the cfl on the friday night of the combine when we were sitting around in the hotel i was hanging out with Dwayne ford which was awesome for like three hours Dwayne and i sat down and just never Dwayne got a new puppy did he really yeah i, didn't, I, didn't know I, that. I, I saw on uh on instagram uh sherry his uh, his wife um 
they have a, a new dog. I don't know what breed it is. See, cute, you, cute puppy though. You think you know a guy? You spend three hours in deep, <laughs> deep conversation with him, and the puppy doesn't even come. Uh, maybe that's why he came down to the hotel in Toronto from his home uh, in, in the GTA is because he wanted to uh, escape the puppy for a couple of hours. I don't know, but uh, but yeah, we had this great conversation and somebody came up and said, Oh, you know, I'm so tired. And I, we just moved before the combine week. And I've been living in this hotel all week. My wife has been telling me about, blah, blah. and Dwayne said, how long have you been in the house? It was about two months. He goes, I've been in mine about 15 years. I'm still unpacking. I said, <laughs> he said, so just be at peace with the idea that you will forever be getting settled in your yeah. new situation, which is okay. But uh, I want to let people know right now, of course, that we are supported. This is made possible by our good friends at Fox 40 as they introduce the new generation of electronic whistles brought to you by Fox 40. The new rechargeable Fox 40 electronic whistle produces 120 decibels of software defined sound power with the push of a button. You can pre-order yours today at fox40shop.com. And don't forget to use the promo code CFP15 at checkout for 15% off of your order. Uh, Kyle and I were joking when we were texting last night. We're like, hey, let's do an episode tomorrow morning. And Kyle's like, I'm kind of out of the loop on some stuff. And I'm like, man, me, me too. I'm like, I've, I've just been buried and trying to get ready for the combine, for the draft, start to wrap my mind around the season and different things. Uh, I am wondering though, Kyle, if at any point you've stumbled across, and, and this isn't you know, some sort of clickbaity thing for us to bring up. I'm genuinely just interested in having a short discussion here before we get to our main stuff, which is going to be on the <laughs> the avalanche of gambling in your face. Hey, do you live in Ontario? You must want to spend money on gambling things. Uh, have you seen the XFL logo? Um, the X- I haven't. Okay, look it up. Just I want to get your your initial assessment here. If you just go to the XFL, the new XFL logo. Yeah. So the Rock- XFL point three. <laughs> so the Rock came out and posted a picture of him with the world's biggest quads, uh, holding a water bottle that kind of had like a chevron. It was almost like a like a what V. The hell? It was like a V looking thing, and he was like, "This is half part of our new branding." And so, and. Um, when the logo came out and again like i'm i'm not here to just like criticize the xfl on everything i know sometimes people probably think that of me because i'm a cfl guy quote unquote but i just i looked at that logo and i was like man this reminds me of when u sports which again i love u sports football i love university athletics in canada going from cis to u sports shit's dumb like yeah. it's and i understand what the methodology was behind it i've i've sat in on a presentation where the then ceo graham brown was who by the way was very quietly parachuted out into the distance after like uh, some things didn't go so great uh yeah. when he was explaining to a conference the rebrand and as he was making the presentation i'm in the back of the room and i'm like oh none of this makes any sense i'm like yeah. i'm like he's trying to explain it to me firsthand i'm getting the information directly from the source of why they did this how they did this and i just it just wasn't for me it still isn't and it's that's kind of how I feel about the XFL thing was I saw what they tried to do and I read the explanation of the logo and the reasoning and the design. I'm like, you guys paid somebody like half a million dollars probably to come up with something I could have created in Microsoft paint in three minutes. I know. Um, I just looked at that logo. That's, that's, it's pretty bad. You know what it looks like? It looks like a, a, a defense contractor logo. That's what it looks like with like the black and the silver. I'm just like, why? Well, Um, but but here's the thing. The logo, whether it was fantastic or whether it was bad, I'm going to, I'm going to say it again. It's, it's going to be the same. So so Um, I see, I I would have thought that they would have gone with more of like what the NBA has done, like a shield, right? Cause the, the NFL has the, the shield that everything is encapsulated inside of this kind of like, bang. And then the Raptors put the claw inside of the ball. And all these teams in the NBA have started to go to more and more of almost like, um, you know, European football, being able to, to have your team's emblem trapped within this one self-contained yeah. thing. The idea of using the, the, the two chevrons basically coming together, together as the, uh, as the logo, I'm like, I don't really know how you expand upon that. I don't really know how. Yeah. It, all the leagues, they all have shields, right? The NHL yeah. has a shield, the NBA, the NFL, MLS MLS didn't have a shield for a long time Mm -hmm. and they went to the shield um, in the rebranding. So, you know, for the XFL, they're kind of, you know, on an Island with, 
their logo, but I think they're going to be on an island with a lot of things. Yeah, likely. Uh, we will see how that plays out. Let's get into uh, the meat of our show for you today. Uh, Kyle has always been my my source, my go-to, my, my trusted confidant when it comes to gambling and sports because I've never wagered a penny of my own money uh that might change at some point but it's just it was never something that interested me growing up i'm not familiar yep. was never familiar with how to do it when to do it uh, you know i basically had to learn what the hell overs and unders even were when i was in my late <laughs> 20s so uh, but i've been really intrigued just from an outsider's perspective and I, I guess you know outsider but also an insider because of working for the cfl on tsn uh this week when they sign an exclusive partnership with FanDuel, but not just that Every time I open Twitter, I have bet MGM with Jamie Foxx uh, pushing to me, or, or pushing to me, hey, Ontario, we're open for business. Bet with the king of sports yeah. books. Uh, I have uh, the wife from Curb Your Enthusiasm. I don't know her name with the score app. Every time I open Twitter, it's a pushed ad. It's a promoted ad. It's in your face. It's DraftKings is in. Uh, points bet is in. Um, you know, there's, there's a, a variety of books. I think that pretty much covers them all, but in Ontario, and it's, it's almost similar to the way that I feel about how we went from when I was a child, marijuana is like, oh my God, anything but this, anything but this yeah. parents are scared, terrified, don't do. And now it's like, there's every, every corner sh shop that used to be a max or a Seven Eleven in Hamilton is a dispensary and gambling has always yeah. been viewed. It, for me growing up as like that thing that people do that's really risky and I was, now every time that i'm walking through a stadium i either hear people talking about bets or placing bets and it's arrived in ontario but man it's arrived in a way that i don't even think i could have anticipated with the amount of excitement and pushed content where it's like in your face you are going to do this yeah I, i'm glad you brought up the example of um you know, the, the marijuana dispensary thing, because from what I've seen so far and the amount of books that have, have dropped in Ontario, mm -hmm. I think there is a possibility this is going to go much down the same route that dispensary um, rollout happened. And that was at the beginning, there are so many books, but how many marijuana dispensaries do you know? Or I'm not saying you know, how many marijuana dispensaries have you seen yeah. that have closed down already that don't exist anymore? Like there's probably a lot. And I think that's going to happen with the sports books too, because there are a ton of sports books, sports books that I'm not saying I, I've never heard of before, because obviously it's new to Ontario and everybody wants to, you know, get their, their toe in the water. And I understand that, but like, I think the amount of money that has been thrown into this simply based on marketing. Like, um, what is it? Bet Rivers has given a bunch of money to Dan O'Toole. That stuff's going to like go away, right? Like Natasha uh, Staniszewski, um, you know, she's doing stuff too for a sports book. I don't even know which one. Like they're throwing a bunch of marketing dollars and I understand it because at the beginning you have to get your name out there. So the consumers can go out and use those sports books, but eventually that stuff is probably going to stop a little, uh, there's probably begin, uh, you know, going to be another wave of it, but yeah, there are a, a, you know, a ton of, of sports books, but you know, for, for, for sports betters that are doing this every day, what did I say when, you know, the, the law changed, the legislation changed, I said for, for people that, you know, bet every day and betting for the last 10, 15 years, this doesn't change anything for them. Mm. They're still going to use the sports book they were using. They're probably on Bet365. They're probably still going to use it. Now, they might use the Ontario books, uh, maybe, uh, you know, a single book because they got, you know, a promo code, right? You know, you deposit $500, they match your, you know, uh, you know, your deposit and they give you $500 of, you know, free money to bet. And all of a sudden, that's a serious bankroll and you can start moving on that. But I don't think this is going to look the same as it does right now, let's say in a year from now. Yeah, it's interesting. First of all, you gave me chills down my spine when you said another wave uh, of marketing spending, because I'm like, let's please not talk about any more waves. Uh, <laughs> no even more waves. Though, <laughs> even though Ontario is in the middle of another one, because you know we just gave up on trying to track anything. Um, but then I also 
it intrigues me because the marketing up front, like you're talking about with Dan O'Toole's podcast and with Staniszewski doing some of that stuff, which by the way, congratulations to her on also becoming the Calgary Stampeders yeah. uh, reporter. That's super cool. I enjoyed the sit downs that she did with Dave Dickinson this week. Uh, but being able to spend that amount of money up front to make people aware of who you are and what you are about. Uh, I feel like gambling is pretty self-explanatory and this is what's always intrigued it's kind of like the idea of the amount of money being spent on play-by-play broadcasters and color guys like Aikman and and Joe Buck and otherwise it's like does it make a difference if you spend 15 million dollars to go and get a name because I'm gonna watch Monday Night Football regardless of who's calling the game it really doesn't matter to me the only play that they're actually making there is to spend a ton of money so that they can get more big teams that will play in those Monday night football games because the draw is supposed to be, well, we got these guys calling the game. Therefore it feels bigger, whatever. For me, the marketing and the idea of spending so much money on gambling to get it out there in front of people is not to actually get people to use your platform or to understand your platform. It's almost like a collective of the gambling industry as it comes to Ontario to say, we are all here. Like we're, we're all available. They're just trying to make themselves as prominent as possible so that people want to get involved uh, on the early stages. and But I do wonder what the breaking point is for, and even if there is a breaking point, because I don't know how deep that gambling money is going to roll, and I assume it's going to roll pretty deep for a decent period of time. Yep. I wonder what the cutoff point is of places where they say, like our cannabis dispensary uh, you know, analogy, where they say, well, we can't, we can't keep doing this. This doesn't make sense to us anymore to keep pushing it this way because we're not actually getting the, the re- reception that we want. And I, I know there will be sm- smart sports gambling people and sports media business people who will be tracking, I guess, uh, engagement from different books and the amount of love that, that people are getting because I genuinely don't know how people decide where to go with their gambling money when all of a sudden in Ontario, there's like, a dozen places that want to take your money and are all giving you different odds, different odds on different things. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny because, you know, sports gamblers, and I know a lot, um, they're very simple and all they want is a good sports book with good odds where you're not getting nickel and dimes at every turn. Right. Um, they want easy deposit, easy withdrawals. That's, that's, that's what they want. And they want a mobile app so they can put bets in and live betting, which most sports books now do. If you don't have live betting, you're probably not a very good sports book. Right. Right. So that, that, that's what they want. They don't need the glitz and the glam of Jamie Foxx and uh, they don't need all that stuff. Right. Now that might pull them in. Um, but that doesn't, doesn't make them stay. Right. And if somebody is, you know, putting in because they saw a commercial and they're like, oh, that's cool. Jamie Foxx. I'm going to put $200 in. And then two weeks later, once that $200 is gone after the deposit bonus of hundred percent. So, okay. $400, you know, Billy gets uh, confident in, you know, whatever the Toronto Maple Leafs. And all of a sudden they go on a three game losing streak yeah. and the $400 is gone. Is he going to come back? Probably not. Cause he, now he doesn't have a deposit bonus. <laughs> Jamie Foxx isn't doing it for him anymore. So he's moving on to one of the other, 15 16 sports books so that's why the experience for the sports gambler is very simple but you can't screw it up and mm-hmm. if you screw it up at any turn they, they're going to take their business elsewhere <laughs> and, and it's a great point and of course this is a, a canadian football podcast as we bounce around some of these ideas and so i do wonder how it will apply to me calling games because when I mentioned this to you last yeah. night, you told me that TSN was already actively, because I should actually preface this by saying uh, that on the Bell Media website, they put out an agreement, which I actually, I read through because I was like, I think this is going to affect me. Like, I think I'm going to have to do, I should probably understand the relationship in the background, but it says FanDuel and TSN enter into a multi-year agreement. FanDuel Group North America's premier online gaming company announced today, this is back on April 4th, which is three days ago. Uh, that it has reached a first-of-its-kind multi-year agreement with TSN to introduce its leading sports book to Canadian sports fans. FanDuel will be a, the official sports book partner for TSN starting first in Ontario. The partnership comes as the province has legalized online sports and casino wagering. The deal provides opportunity for scaled expansion into other Canadian provinces and territories pending regulation. FanDuel will deliver its global expertise in mobile sports book and casino operations across TSN. 
through original content and innovative digital products. The FanDuel Sportsbook will be the exclusive provider to sports odds across TSN programming to deepen fan engagement and reimagine the way sports betting can be offered alongside sports content. That line right there, in terms of pairing it with sports content and reimagining how we package these things together, uh, you were watching the Leafs game and something jumped out to you. Yeah, so I was watching the Leafs game and I think it was like second... And a second intermission. Um, I can't remember what the score was. I think it was I think it was five three. The Leafs were up five one and they ended up blowing the lead. Oh, that was then, the Panthers game? Yeah. Yeah. So they were up five one, and then it was five three going into the second intermission. And you know, Florida has been, you know, famous this year for having big comebacks. They just had one uh, I think last week against New Jersey. Qu- quick like, stat on this. Quick stat on this that I heard the other day because I was listening to the Levitard show and they're based yeah. down in Florida. They said that um, there has only been a team that's come back from a four goal deficit twice in a single season, six times in NHL history. And the Panthers just did it in the span of a week. Yeah. <laughs> like they, they are ridiculously fun. Yeah. So, and, and I think there was another stat of, I think 14 times this year, a team has come back from four goals in the NHL. Wow. Four of them have been the Florida Panthers. <laughs> Out of the 14 times this season in the NHL, which is pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, second intermission, uh, Lindsay Hamilton, she was like looking at a screen off camera and she's like, uh, you know, uh, live odds on the game right now. Florida's plus 275. You know, the wow. Maple Leafs are minus 210. And, and those are the odds. And it was, all, I, I told you this via text. It was awkward. I don't blame Lindsay. She's a fantastic broadcaster. It's new. It's so new to yeah. people that don't know about sports betting, and she ain't the only one. There are a <laughs> bunch of broadcasters across this country that, and even in the United States, when they try to dip their toe in that water, man, they look like they just put on flippers for the first time. Like, it's bad. It's a different um, language, though, right? Yeah, and it, it and is this a different is language. Like, DT speaks that language like Derek has known that this stuff was coming for quite some time probably when he was even at sports center at TSN yeah and so he understands it when you hear Derek Taylor talk on the breakdown here on CFP or on his own platforms he understands the gambling world and he is fluent in that language it's like me trying to talk Mandarin and so I come off as awkward <laughs> yeah. which is why I'm, I'm saying to myself well I got to become comfortable with this and understand this because in the flow of conversation If I'm calling a game and, uh, you know, the passing yards for Jeremiah Masoli against Dane Evans, it's you get plus 200 that Masoli is going to have more more throwing yards and more passing yards in his first matchup against his old team for the Red Blacks and the Ticats. It's like, I don't want that to come off as a dead fish thrown in the middle of the broadcast. So it is it really is on people like me to adapt and understand better for the listener, for the fans, so that we can have a relationship as broadcaster and viewer that doesn't feel awkward and I welcome you in and I, but it's tough Kyle, because as a broadcaster, you know, you want to welcome people in, you want to say, Hey, to the gambling community, that's only here because you enjoy wagering. That's cool. But you also don't want to alienate the people who don't give a bleep about gambling. And that's, that's where the delicate balance comes. And that's why I think you're saying with Lindsay, it might've felt awkward because it's like, we now take a break from our regularly scheduled programming and we pivot. And I talk about this thing. Okay. Let's go back to what we usually do. Yeah. Um, it, it is, you know, it's, it's a fine line to, to try to navigate. Um, you know, for me, maybe I'm the bad person, uh, I'm the wrong person to, you know, kind of look this over and give it a grade of how it's going for broadcasters talking about this stuff when it is so new to them, you know, for, for example, like the Buffalo bills, you know, against the New York jets, they're laying eight and a half points, right? Mm. That's how you're supposed to say it. Eight and a half points. You know how many broadcasters I've seen? The Bills are laying 8.5. Oh my God, don't say 0.5. That doesn't exist. In, <laughs> in gambling, it doesn't exist in sports. Just stop saying 0.5. Um, so that's one thing. And then it's like, you know, the Bills uh, uh, laying eight and a half, minus 110. It's not wrong, but minus 110, you don't have to say that. Okay? The Bills are laying ten, uh, eight and a half, and they're laying 10 cents. Like that, that's what it is. Now you don't know what that means. I know what that means. Mm-hmm. So basically you have to lay 10 cents to the dollar, right? So minus 110 is I have to bet a dollar and 10 dollars, or sorry, a, a dollar and 10 cents to win a buck. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. But when I say lay, lay 10 cents to your point, maybe somebody that's not into the gambling world 
what the hell did he just say? Well, and you know what I think <laughs> I think is truly funny about this is that I talk about not alienating people, but when you're talking through laying things and minus 110 and all this, when you are you're talking your way through that, there's a lot of people I can just sense it because I understand listening to people talk about the pros and the cons of this. There are people that just listen to that who have no idea what you were just talking about. I know. And the whole time that you were talking about it, they felt alienated. And the reality is sports broadcasting and broadcasting in general is at a point in Canada where, you know what, if we have to alienate X number of people, but we're bringing in new X amount of people who actually want to spend money and actively engage with our games, they'll do that 10 times over. Yeah. And that's, that's the trade-off I think that I find intriguing here when, you know, I'm going to be speaking to people on, on CFL games is that there's, you, I, I can already tell, I already know how this is going to look. I'm going to bring up odds in the middle of a game or props or whatever it might be. And, you know, maybe even at halftime, they throw back to Aaron Karolnik, one of the prop masters back in the CFL and TSN studios to get a breakdown of where we're at at halftime in the game. And all of a sudden I look at the, you know, my timeline, it's people going, who gives a damn? I don't, I've never spent that time. And it's like, listen, guys, I'm sorry. They don't care about you. And it's not that they don't care about you as fans. It's that they need to welcome in a different variety of fan and they're hoping that you'll stay but if you don't you weren't engaging actively a lot of the time financially and that's the cold hard business i think of where we're headed yeah it is what it is um but like i said this is not going to look the same as it does right now a year from now Hmm. a year from now we're all going to be more educated maybe we stop with like the layman language um around all of this um because people are one to your point either not interested but you can still not be interested in something, but still understand it, right? Yeah. So maybe that will change, but it'll be interesting to see the layout of how, how this rolls out over time. Yeah, absolutely. And the last thing I want to bring up on this is the idea that, yeah, the the, the interest in, in the way that we engage with sports will change and will evolve over time. Who knows how aggressive it gets in stadium, whether there's these, you know, you, know, you and I have always talked about kiosks and things being set up yep. and, and welcoming that in. Um, who knows how soon we get to that point. But the one thing I do know is that as this continues to expand, I don't think that the interest level goes backwards. And so it's almost like it's this constant, I, a lot of things in life, you, you go through the ups and the downs and the here and the there, and oh, we have a down swoop and whatever. I think once this gets off the ground and gets saturated, it continues to go. And, and I would also say this, like the TSN edge stuff that they've done, they worked it in pretty seamlessly over the last couple of years, knowing this was eventually coming. Yeah. And it's, it was basically a platform, like, for example, to peel back the curtain, when we started CFP and we wanted to go find some sponsorship, we said, well, we can't go to people and say, hey, we're going to start a podcast, give us money. We had to have a product in order to be able to say to them, here's the number of downloads we have, here's the interest, here's the consistency yep. that we're producing content for you with. And then we can go and find people that might be interested in using that to leverage their message and getting it out. Shout out to Fox 40. Uh, <laughs> and now that TSN Edge has been this platform that's been created, I know for a fact that there was a long line of discussions that happened with a variety of different places in order to find the soulmate of who we want to work with going forward, who they want to work with, who they want to partner up. So when I saw the FanDuel announcement come out, I'm like, okay, they closed the deal. Like that's one of the people they were negotiating with. And now that they've created that platform. I don't know if it's going to become even more in your face, but I do know that it's not going backwards anytime soon. No, it's definitely not. Um, you know, sports gambling is here to stay, but, but to your point, the most diehard sports gamblers, this didn't change anything for them. They, yeah, they've still yeah. been, you know, betting the, the same way the last 10 years, maybe it changes it a little bit. Um, but these guys are still going to, to, to the bank. Right. Um, I think the next thing that I'm going to be interested to see with all of this is, and I've talked about this before on our show, the casinos, yeah. because if the casinos can start putting the infrastructure in place to have sports books, then that changes things in a big way mm -hmm. because now sports fans, potentially and this could have a, a big effect on sports bars um across canada maybe you just go down to your local casino and eat watch the game and lay bets down yeah because that seems like a much better experience than paying the same amount of food 
to go to a bar when you can't bet. But you can bet uh, on a mobile app, right? But whether somebody is not, you know, technologically, you know, savvy, um, and they they don't want to do that, they just want to go lay a bet in person where you can just put cash, <laughs> you know, over the counter and say, you know, give me the Leafs tonight or something. Yeah, yeah um, it's, it's the experience. I think that changes. The, yeah, I think that changes things in a big way, and it'll be interesting to see how casinos maybe capitalize on this because everybody else is right now and the casinos owned by the government and the government <laughs> uh pro line uh plus whatever their their app yeah. was um they're taking that big hit probably mm. because pro line plus at the beginning you know they were giving out all these deposit bonuses you can't do that forever right you eventually you have to make money um but maybe they're not in the you know the profit based you know business model where they're like Hey, we just need to kind of break even here, and maybe we take business away from from private companies. Um, but all these private companies, if they're you know giving out those deposit bonuses and you know giving you a much better experience than Proline Plus, not the greatest betting experience for betters. Um, that would be a way where they can you know offset the loss of Proline Plus by getting it in casinos and, and making money that way. Yeah, I don't know what business wanted to operate without, uh, you know, a, a profit platform, I guess would be my question on that one. But I also believe... The government. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I also believe that, um, to your point, the idea of uh, <laughs> of being able to mix it up and and get involved as the, as the provincial government with these casinos uh, makes a lot of sense. Because like I was saying, I don't know if it's a great analogy, but uh, it's the idea of, you know, are you playing top shot golf on your phone while you're out to dinner? Or, or are you going to a golf simulator? Like, yeah. are, are you, are you going to go and have the experience and have it mixed into what you're actually doing? Or do you want to play the game on your phone? And then just like, cause it, it feels different when you're doing those two things, certainly. So um, that'll be, I think a large question for me going forward as well. But uh, by the way, we went to uh, me and a couple of the Mac football alumni guys uh, a couple of weeks ago, we went to forced Joni uh, in Hamilton here and uh, <laughs> my buddy, Jared Jones, uh, who happens to be black, uh, says to me, I want to play a course in Florida. You know, it's kind of rainy and whatnot. And I, I feel like I'm interested in playing a course in Florida. We're like, great. So the guy goes to the computer and he pulls it up because he goes, you've got two options. He said, you can play over, I forget what the other one was, or he goes, or you can play at uh, Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and we both just looked at each other and he started laughing. And he goes, I feel dirty about it. But let's play Marlock. <laughs> a nice course for as and, bad as and horrible as Donald Trump is. The one thing is. that maybe he is successful in is golf courses because his golf courses are really nice. He has yeah. the one in New Jersey and he has Marlock. So we played it and we were just getting destroyed by Tyler Loveday, another Mac football guy. And uh, and at one point he was playing the course so well that I. You know, I'm terrible at real golf. I'm terrible at simulator golf. It doesn't matter. Uh, but Tyler was playing the course so well. I said, you're a little too good at this course. Where were you on January 6th? <laughs> 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 totally caught him off guard. He's like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I am a little bit too good at this course. And, I, and very suspiciously on the next hole, he shot a plus five. Man, I just couldn't couldn't get it on the green. So, uh, you know, I think he might have tanked at some point there. But anyways, that's going to do it for us on the show this week. It's great to catch up with uh, with Kyle Mel. We'll be back doing regular stuff like this. Just little snippet shows. Uh, yeah. cra crazy to think that we started out doing uh, like three hour extravaganzas every time we would get together on things. But as the season gets closer, we'll be doing more seasony recap type stuff as well. So looking forward to uh, to putting that together for everybody. Kyle, have yourself a day. And we'll talk next week. OK, talk next week. And uh back to work today. <laughs> the nine to five job. The life. The life.